For more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com. This is Dark Cybernetics, Space Year Games, and SDL2. Follow along with our free course documentation. Our approach to learning SDL will be a presentation, a discussion about what we plan to do, and then a demonstration. That will be some live coding. And when we work on these types of projects, remember to try to take better notes. We need to practice on our own, um, try to do things ourselves. From that, we need to make examples, right? Well, for those of you who are not familiar with the Simple Direct Media Layer, let's go online and find some free stuff, right? There's free things online we can use to make game projects. One of the more popular things to search for online are coupon codes, websites. More, the more popular websites do have coupon codes and discounts, which can be used to redeem as money and other forms of currency. There are art tools, free graphic assets for games and other projects. There's music, audio clips, voiceovers are more popular nowadays. There's software and other tools for making three-dimensional graphics and textures. But what for our purposes, we're more concerned about games. The Simple Direct Meal Air was created in 1998, and there have been a host of projects, commercial and non-commercial, independent or indie games have been created using the Simple Direct Media Layer. One of the more popular indie games is uh, Dwarf Fortress, is available here on this website. Um, it's available here at this website, and there are other SDL games, other websites that host video games online, and there are other competitions and things. One of the more uh, older, more popular uh, top-down shooters is this um, Sea Dogs SDL. Let's get on to um, installing SDL. Well, first you need to head over to the SDL's website, and download SDL. There's an official wiki page. There's a website called Lazy Foods, one of the more popular websites for SDL development. That we will mention others as our video series progresses. Remember that this is the new version of SDL, SDL2. There is a legacy version available here, and there's a completely different set of functions, and some of the functions have been depreciated. Well, for our first project, we need to think about what are we doing? what makes our game unique, so what makes it fun, and how long it would take to produce this game, right? What part of game programming is hard? Well, which part? That's one of the more common questions you hear about game programming today, um, or any type of development. Is programming hard? Well, it's hard to say. Move over to our installer, our compiler. Um, for different versions of operating, so like Macintosh and Linux and things, you know, there's a or help on a wiki page for installing SDL. It's available for other platforms. And remember that when you type in the linker options, that it's a lowercase l, and you just type l mean 32, and you know SDL2 main, and you know we just go through it. There are a host of different compilers which are free online. There, there's the Community Edition of SDL. Microsoft has for free development offers. And there's code blocks, one, one, the one we will be using for this video series. Um, and there's uh, Bloodshed, the DFC++. Well, for code blocks, for installation, it's a quick, very simple process. We're going to create an empty project. We're going to, to download some material from the website and it has DLL file in it. It's really based on the type of compiler we have. And we're going to type in, and of course, linker options for SDL. And then we're going to need to know the lib and include directory. So we put our folders inside of our computer in a different way, which we'll talk about and demonstrate later. Well, about the Simple Direct Neil there, it gives us low level access to our devices. You can read this on the uh, wiki page. We have mouse, as joystick, which is gamepad, and it has support for 3D games. It's low level access. You know, low makes it easier. It's easier to port from one console or uh, PC to the other. It has support for video, which is API application program interface. We can support multiple monitors. Yeah. There's touch gestures. Um, there's input events, uh, reading from the joystick, the mouse, the keyboard is trackball, and touch gestures. Um, there's support for threading. There's for audio support. There's we have to use um, SDL Mixer, and SDL Mixer has support for surround sound and uh, 3D sound. You know, there's some other techniques we can use for later projects. There's file abstraction, there's shared operating system support, 
there is threading if you're not familiar with threading um, from mutex and there's other we'll get into that later there's support for timers uh, we're talking about milliseconds which is important like SDL delay and SDL uh, get ticks um, there's CPU detection because now most even mobile phones have multiple processors um, the SDL the self direct media layer is available in the Zlib license also, there's support for power management, and it's available for more commonly for Windows, Macintosh, Linux, iOS, and Android. And those are more the five major distributors. All right, for SDL, many of the games inside the Steam Store are SDL. So, what are we trying to do this year? Well, we want to learn two-dimensional and three-dimensional game programming, right? And what we're going to try to make in this course series are different game genres like side-scrolling shooters, platformers, which are the more popular um, topics, um, top-down shooters, uh, role-playing games, uh, puzzle games. And what we'll need for this is really a computing device, a supported computing device, and you really need to use your imagination. And that's one of the sticklers for uh, programming. So... What should we do with the simple direct media layer? Well, we need to try to figure out how to make template programs for future projects, right? We need to ignore a lot of information. We just need to know the information that's useful for creating our engine. And that's all we should keep, right? We need to know what about SDL is important and what parts of SDL can be used to create video games. So for asset creation, there is an important tool which we can use or for voice effects right um audacity is popular for 3d models and 3d textures we can head over to blender get blender's website for making sprites there are a host of different tools um, gimp is popular we can use art for drawing backgrounds and there's tools like family tracker which can be used to make bit music for our project uh, we will talk about using game put pads right we can talk about using um, an input device, like a game controller. This um, game controller, it could be any kind of type of controller. It has support for other types of game control features. All right. In this course series, we need to talk about our overview, right? We need to talk about SDL2, OpenGL, Vulkan, C++, Glue, GLSL, GLFW, HLSW. We'll go into each one of those at a different and later date. We need to talk about mathematics graph theory, linear algebra, parts of physics, some algebra, algorithms, platformers. <laughs> there's a little bit of, there's a way we need to discuss these things. Pathfinding, search, AI. There's the parts of this that need to go beyond that. So we need to talk about computer graphics, shaders, or shadows, what's lighting, um, game design concepts, marketing, advertisement and making independent game competitions well all right so there's a, a trouble here there's some types of problems that we have generally in between k12 uh, k to 12 mathematics is functions addition subtraction multiplication graphs right and division and fractions and that these are the problems all right so for our first project we need to work about um, templates. We need to templatize our, our program. So what we need to do on the screen is get the stuff on the screen and get things moving around. We need to have some text put, some text output, right? Um, a template one. On our template one, we want a scroll direction to go to the left. We have a ship with movement. There is some kind of stage border so the image of our ship does not leave the, the threshold. And it's similar if we put the image in a different place on the screen so that also affects the way the game plays so if we had a ship on the left side of the screen and he could go back so it, but he couldn't turn around because that's not how the game works but he can go up down left and right right but if, suppose we put the image on the bottom and the image he could go up and down but going up this time increases the scroll speed right the speed of the, the, the vessel Right, that changes the way the, the game plays. Our most important part of the, of the game process is the game loop. Right, 
So we need to, we have some information, we render, we input, we update, we do some logic, there's some sounds that maybe happen last, right? And this order is relatively important sometimes, other times it's not, since these operations happen, can happen millions of times a second. Their order is not really so important, but we need to put them in a logical order where it works, right? There's difference in types of rendering. We can do hardware rendering and there's software rendering, right? There's other types of rendering which really depend on the platform and what's the supported device. And if your computer does not have a graphics card, we can't use some of these features, right? So we're going to focus first on making two dimensional games using SDL. One important concept is N over two, right? Screen size, right? If our screen is a particular size, we may not need to explicitly write out the screen size, you know, if it's 800 by 600, suppose 800 by 600 is not supported by our computer. So we won't go into 800 by 600. We may, have, we may not meet the uh, requirements, right? So we need to talk about having a supported texture package for different types of, and different sizes of the screen. So for our program, our game objective would be putting a score up in a, a corner, having a player object, that shoots missiles, some type of background operations, and uh, obstacles. They could, they could be rocks, they could be shoes, it could be anything, right? So our program objective, we need to have a missiles, right? Player movement, you can go up, down, left, and right. There's some type of collision. Um, when the health reaches zero, we need to restart the game. That's particularly game over. We need to have some type of main menu, right? We need, we need spawning enemies with behavior, and we need some type of screen scroller, right? Something like this. We need something like this. We have a health bar and a score, and we have a ship that fires lasers. We could talk about animation later, and that's not really so important for our first project. Um, for our start menu, you need to have a title. We could talk about do there need to be sectors. If we have a mouse that hovers over, there need to be sectors for the mouse region. Um, we need to start the game. There needs to be some options, maybe. And you turn the game off. That's really important. Is it an image? Is it text? That's important. So for our making a window, we need to have a height and a width, right? Every window has a height and width dimensions. There is there are functions for determining this inside STL. We need to name the window, right? For our game, if you see it down in your uh, browser, there's a game screen, right? There's sometimes there's a front buffer and a back buffer, and depending on what type of graphics card you have, if this is a graphics card related game, some parts, some graphics cards, if you have two graphics cards, one graphics card may be used to write one piece of information to the screen, and the second graphics card may be used to write the other part of the information to the screen. Or, you may have a system where you write information to the screen, and you hold a piece until it's finished, and then it puts it on the screen, or it just puts the same information back on the screen once the buffer is finished being written, right? And, you know, we could change the way the game plays if we um, use force feed, so we can adjust to how fast or how slow um, our ship moves by uh, incorporating force feed, right? So, let's look at the DLLs, right? Once we download the, the material inside the folders, there's information, there is an SDL.DLL, we, we talk about the legacy, the original version of SDL 1.2, other information, right? Um, the SDL2.DLL, we're talking about dynamically linked library. These are just a set of functions we use for the library, so we can access it, right? So it needs to be put in right inside the compiler. There's, if we want to use images like PNG and other formats, we need to use the image header. The, for sound, we need to use a mixer. For network activity, we need to use net. And for, for text, we need to use a TTF, right? They are also available on the website. All right, we're just gonna look at some SDL functions today. There's SDL init, SDL has flags. There's a function for setting the window title. Um, a very important function, SDL quit, right? There's a delay for operation. And then we have this SDL poll event. So for the create window function, we can name the window, we can determine the size of the window position, and we determine the height and width of the screen, All right? So very important things, and a lot of our SDL programs will have these in them. SDL event, 
SDL renderer, SDL present renderer, SDL copy renderer, SDL window, SDL surface, SDL texture, SDL rect, and SDL destroy. All right? We're going to destroy things. We make stuff, we destroy stuff. Okay? Well, if we <laughs> access things, we need to free surfaces, right? If we make surfaces, we need to free surfaces. We need to free up memory. Okay? And using the image files, we need to initialize, we need to load the image in, we need to save the bitmap, and we need to create the surface, right? So our sample program, right? We need to just have SDL2, a header. We need to change our main program. If you're not familiar with C++ programs, it, we're taking a string of arguments this time. We need to initialize SDL. We turn on everything. Um, also in SDL, we have support for OR clauses. We can take in and reduce certain features. If we don't need sound, or if it's not a device that supports sounds, or we're not using controller pads for the for the game we can take those out there's, there's support for that inside SDL we can you by using the or inside the instance we we're, we're initializing the subsystems of SDL we can turn off SDL and then we would return zero sometimes but when we're writing a program we do, do not keep everything in main and for more information please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com